Hello everybody, my name is Luke Mar and this is Hot La Mode and today on Hot La Mode we are coming to you with our Haute Couture reviews for the fall 2022 season. With it we have seen designers from all over the world showcase their collections to the premier luxury fashion clients of the world. Haute Couture is translated to high sewing and dates back to the custom creation of garments made to the body specifications of the individual wearer, as opposed to general sizes like 0 to 22 in ready-to-wear. As time has passed, haute couture has become both imaginative and a crafts haven for designers, while also being a destination for the world's wealthiest willing to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on just one gown. Now this season we saw a total of 35 brands show some great some well, not so great, as per usual. And the last review that we're gonna be doing is Iris Van Herpen. Iris Van Herpen celebrated its 15th year anniversary as a brand with the fall 2022 Haute Couture show. And as per usual, the Dutch designer provided quite a lot to think about. The collection was titled Metamorphism, which is derived from the Greek word metamorphosis for transformations, and has a modern definition of the process of transformation from an immature form to an adult form in two or more distinct stages. It seems that Van Herpen was nostalgic about the brand's history and how far it has come while still pushing her craft to evolve. A draped gown opened the collection and was a rather smart way for her to remind the audience that flowing fabrics haven't always been a part of the IVH brand, but rather something that in recent years she has begun to experiment with and subsequently master. The gown is called Genesis and is the Greek word for origin while being made up of an off-white banana leaf fabric and a greenish gold satin that moves fluidly up and down the dress. The sheer corset is the foundation of the garment and both the banana leaf fabric, which accentuates one of the shoulders, and the satin, which creates a drape that resembles an ancient Greek keton, essentially create the spectacle. With a name like Genesis and a resemblance to ancient Greco-Roman costume, Van Herpen is almost denoting her continuation of the work of major, but often forgotten designers like Madeleine Vianney and Madame Grey, who popularized draping styles like these in the 20th century. Is Van Herpen the heiress to the classical fashion crown with styles like these? I'd say so. A sheer organza gown followed but was decorated with curved appliques that wisped around every element with yellow and purple accents. The color combos have been used before by Van Herpen in previous collections and the appliques create a skeletal structure and when you look at the skirt it actually creates a drop waist pannier effect as the skirt juts out intriguingly. While it feels like a garment that we've seen before, it's nice to see a historical silhouette materialize in such a forward-thinking designer. Two gowns follow and showcase Van Herpen's dissection of traditional haute couture and luxury fabrics while updating and reframing them in her more modern and also synthetic fabrication methods. The gowns are made up of sheer fabric that utilize black silicone that create an organic yet futuristic frame on the body, but feature traditional lace panels throughout. While lace in the context of other brands can feel vintage and dull, depending on its use, Van Herpen gives it a vein-like quality in these dresses, and gradient dyeing it in the case of the blue and amethyst dress only further transforms it. The Ovidius dress follows, which is a cocktail dress made up of a semi-obvious gauze base, but had draped ochre organza swirls that emanate asymmetrically from the waist. These swags paint themselves from the center of the waist down to the side of the right hip and the left bicep while growing larger as they do, as well as covering the breasts and creeping up to the neck somewhat. The dress is not the most radical we have ever seen from Iris Van Herpen, but the name of Ovidius does give some context to the collection's theme, as Van Herpen wanted to explore the works of Ovid, the famed ancient Roman poet who wrote Metamorphosis, a heralded poem taking on the retelling of Greek mythology, while also incorporating at the time of writing in 8 AD current, but now to us, ancient Roman history. Now, with the context of Ovid and Metamorphosis being a direct inspiration of this look, it would be intriguing to see whether or not this asymmetrical draped style is inspired by the ancient Greco-Roman fashions of draping and wrapping fabrics around the body. The next dress we can see is yet another astounding moment, and one that might be familiar to those that remember Dove Cameron's look 
from the 2022 Met Gala. I will say it's been hard to find information about the dress from the runway, but if it is like Cameron's look from the Met Gala, we can assume this version is made of white fabric that has been bonded to mylar, which is a bow pet or biactually oriented polyethylene terephthalate, or the technically inclined, which is essentially polyester that has a range of capabilities like being an electrical insulator and gas barrier, to say just a few. Now, why do you care? Well, the mylar is probably the pieces that protrude horizontally from the bust and create these hooked structures from which yarns fall down to the floor in a white to aqua gradient. The wing-like bodice structure is superb as well, but the shoulders made of mylar do continue to assert that Van Herpen is the leading designer in textile exploration and craft, and she is constantly pushing herself and her atelier to work with new materials and techniques that are groundbreaking. While she might not fit into the traditional regulations of haute couture. She fits in with the fashion visionaries like Charles James, Elsa Schiaparelli, Madeleine Viennet, and Cristobal Balenciaga, whose experimentation expanded the world's idea of what fashion was. While many will call it stupid and a waste of energy and materials, who knows what Van Herpen's work could inspire in the future? Maybe a young inventor seeing these clothes could develop carbon capture fabric or jewelry made from desalination plant waste. If that were to happen, then her work would not only have been beautiful and revolutionary in its own right, but also inspire change and good in the future as well. That's why this is important. Two white gowns then emerged with the first being made up of a halter style 3D printed structure that descended down to the model's hips. The white 3D printed bodice was also electroplated with silver, meaning that Van Herpen's atelier is not only 3D printing and molding silicone, but also doing metalwork. I mean, people, that is nouveau couture. The rest of the dress is made up of poly silk that creates a trumpet cut, which seems to be related to the white halter gown, which consists of poly silk and lace intertwined. The use of lace continues and instead trims the dress's straps and flows throughout the poly silk, almost like a paint by numbers display. The dress is also a mermaid cut, which helps relate it to the trumpet gown we saw earlier, but has a much more traditional wedding dress feeling, even though it's been Van herpen affied. Both gowns are brilliant interpretations of traditional wedding attire, while also incorporating both experimental and traditional textiles. A coat dress titled Metamorphism is in an off-white with asymmetrical loop collar and side vents that create a train effect, while having hunched draped sleeves, which is uncommon in the world of tailoring. The embroidery on the front of the coat in blue and ochre depicts faces, which is a motif we have seen before from Van Herpen, like the Spring 2019 collection. And overall, while it's a nice coat, it isn't exactly show-stopping. A gown named Narcissus is, as you can guess, a reference to the myth of Narcissus, attributed to none other than Ovid's metamorphosis where Narcissus is supposed to live a long life as long as he doesn't discover himself. Tell that to me at 14. He is enormous beauty, but is dismissing of those doting over him, which causes the revenge goddess Nemesis to punish him by leading him to a pond where he sees his own reflection and becomes consumed with his own beauty and dies due to his inability to remove himself from the spot where he laid to look at himself. Iris Van Herpen translated Ovid's poem into a black gown embroidered with white ribbons that depict multiple beautiful faces. Pieces of glass organza sprout from the sleeve, bust, and collar, all showing faces that are objectively beautiful, just like Narcissus, with one even covering half of the model's face, almost like it's depicting the reflection of Narcissus in the pond. Due to the back of the neck having this glass organza with embroidery sandwiching the model's head in between the two panels, it feels like a physical metaphor for Narcissus's being stuck inside of his own beauty. The gown is both wonderful looking and a manifestation of the story of Narcissus proving once again Iris Van Herpen's storytelling is brilliant. Another white gown blew in and was titled Ananda Maya in reference to the Hindu philosophy of Ananda Maya Kosha, and that means sheath of bliss, relating to the experience of bliss. Its translation is also a play on the English word sheath, which can relate to a type of dress, although Van Herpen, through asymmetrical plissé tulle and skeletal bodice pieces, reimagined the traditional sheath. The dress, while probably not relating to Ovid, is a smart play on the Hindu idea of shrouding oneself in bliss by shrouding the model in dreamy and light 
fabric. We have a jumpsuit that follows named Singularity and is made up of ochre reflective organza seen most effectively in the long flowing sleeves that reach the model's shins. The 3D printed applique that starts at the neck and descends down the bodice and sleeves is also rather intriguing in materiality because it is made up of leftover cocoa shell beans electroplated with copper, which only further expands the viability to what can be turned into clothing as we are meant to look at a circular economy in the midst of the effects of climate change. The finale look from the collection was an interpretation of Ovid's story of Apollo and Daphne, where Apollo, the god of beauty, was taught a lesson by the god of love, Eros. Eros made Apollo fall in love with the nymph of Daphne, who in turn is given the feeling of disgust regarding Apollo by Eros in return. Daphne flees from Apollo's advances and turns herself into a laurel tree. And in sadness, Apollo makes a crown of laurel leaves from Daphne's tree to remember his love of her and gives permission to those in their moments of triumph to wear laurel leaf crowns as well. Kind of a creepy story, not really into it, but Iris Van Herpen's dress made of white silk recreated the transformation Daphne is forced to undergo in order to escape Apollo, which again is such a brilliant way of transforming Ovid's stories into a physical form. The way that the Mylar arches move up and have laser cut silk leaves that sprout from them both capture the concept of Daphne's feminine figure as a tree, but also of the circular shape of the laurel crowns worn by Apollo and later Roman emperors. When the background behind the dress is given, it automatically transforms the garment from just another Iris Van Herpen gown into a masterpiece. Couple that with the fact that the look is the finale look, which traditionally in haute couture is reserved for wedding styles might give a deeper look at the way unrequited love and marriage and haute couture by that extent could possibly go hand in hand depending on the couple. Iris Van Herpen's metamorphism is not only a celebration of the brand's 15th anniversary, but also probably one of her strongest collections yet. While it looks similar to the collections of past, it updates fabrics and techniques synonymous with the house, also showcasing the way that Iris Van Herpen has become one of fashion's best and most important storytellers. I curtsy before the brilliance of the designer and her ability to fearlessly leap to where no fashion designer has gone before. I want to wish Iris Van Herpen and everybody in her atelier the happiest of anniversaries, and I thank them for upholding the importance of creativity and fashion. A thank you. So that is the end of our review. Love to know what you guys think of all of the looks in the comments down below. Let me know, let me know, let me tell me thoughts, opinions, comments, concerns, critiques. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and TTYL.